Good evening, good evening. I have been waiting this for a while. I bid you welcome to the Madhouse. My name's Adam Feezy, my co-host over here, Mark Davis Salad. Are you good? And I also, yeah, I'm doing well. And I also bid you welcome to the Madhouse. And I am so chuffed <laughs> right now that we got one of my heroes on the show tonight. CJ Wildheart, what's going on, man? You good? <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm I'm knee deep in packaging hot sauce at the moment. You know, it doesn't get more rock and roll than that. Uh, it sounds spicy to me. Well, mate. is that figuratively or literally? <laughs> literally, so literally. I have my hot sauce, <laughs> sauce um, brand and and yeah, I've just been packaging up a few thousand bottles, so it's yeah, it's it's nice. quite tough. Work, is, but I'm not complaining because my sauce is damn good and people get to put some damn fine condiment on their food. <laughs> oh, uh, CJ, we will definitely be going into this tonight, mate. We will definitely be going into this a bit. But yeah, um, well, I mean, the, the big important news out of the way, you've got a new single out, haven't you? Ooh, uh, I have, yes. Uh, it's, a it's, little it's, thing it's, called State of Us. Yeah, it's... it's, um, it's uh, I'm quite stealthy. There's, there's, I don't have a record deal. You know, there's no press. I don't have, I'm not paying for any press or radio pluggers on this. And, you know, this, this, this single, you know, I dropped a few weeks ago and the album's going to drop in a couple of weeks as well. And there's no huge fanfare. I'm just putting this out. It's to survive, you know, all our tours have been canceled and I wanted to drop a lockdown album. What wasn't me with an acoustic guitar in my kitchen or sitting room filmed on an iphone yeah you know? yeah no i mean at the end of the day you're a rock and roll guy like, like yeah, you know i mean it's, it's the album's a hardcore punk album and it's it's me screaming at the world because there's a lot to scream about at the moment you know? um i i gotta say the uh the single state of us i am absolutely loving it um thank you it like it's got a very motorhead vibe um uh, like yeah it's got some punk stuff there for me as well but like um as soon as i heard that kicking in with the uh the really aggy bass tone going on that was yeah brilliant it's, it's, um, a few people have said the motor but i mean it's it's people who've heard the album have also said it's the lightest song on the album as well oh which it is oh. it is um it's probably the ballad of the album um <laughs> But I mean, the, the the most people who have heard the, the album have kind of come back with the same references. They pick up on the hardcore punk thing, but there's a lot of metal on there as well, a lot of old school fresh, and they're kind of um, shocked at the anger on there. But it's 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 been a mad year, and this isn't a time for pop music and lovely summery tunes. You know, if if you if you're you're making that sort of music, you you you've missed the zeitgeist. You haven't hit it at all. This year it hasn't been about that, you know, and it's it's been a devastating year for a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, definitely, man. <laughs> and I mean, if that's the ballad for the album, I try to think how heavy the rest of it's, it's going to be. It's, definitely <laughs> the, it's the, 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 the lightest tune on, on the on the album. It's the only one that hasn't got swearing in, hence it's a single. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a single by default then, is it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice um so i i did read somewhere that all of the guitars and stuff on this record's all you yeah um all my solo albums i play everything myself apart from the drums everything yeah i i, I record everything on my own in my my home setup and then get go to a studio and replace the drums with a drummer and then mix with my producer um uh, Dave Draper but no I do everything myself yeah it's a solo album in, in the sense of I'm working so no yeah <laughs> uh, that's all awesome. who, who was the drummer um the last three albums it's been Jason Bold he plays in a band called Bullet from a Valentine and so he 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 played on my last three albums yeah uh, I, I'm I'm really sorry. My missus is actually in the room watching this happen, and she just gasped because she's a massive <laughs> bullet fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I know they're a big band, but I've never heard them before. But I, I mean, I've always worked with Jace. He's such a great drummer, and um, we don't rehearse. I send him over my finished tracks, and he listens to them the night before, and then comes down the studio and just knocks it like gets the albums done in about three three four hours. The guy is. I don't know. He must have some sort of photographic memory or something. I just, you know, I've, I've never ever rehearsed with the guy and he's played on what three of my albums. Very easy. He's a, yeah, a force. 
That is awesome. Uh, Actually, go, but going back to the, um, the, the, you do everything in the studio, other than drums. What, how, do you find that challenging? Is there something easy? When I try and record, I, I love to play, love to write, love to perform, but I hate doing both the recording and the playing. Um, um, very How's it for you? Challenging when you're working with four or five other people, i.e. the band, and you're all in the studio together. I find that very challenging because of, um, I find, you know, working musicians tend to be quite um, high maintenance people, especially rock musicians and punk musicians. And, you know, they, they kind of have, um, so there's, there's always kind of a little bit of drama, especially with the Wild Hearts, if you, our history, we're not, you know, we're not, the most we're quite a volatile band we can be but you know it's taken three decades for us to find our groove and find where we all fit in in this this band but when i work on my own it's almost um zen like for me you know i can't i can't argue with myself and you know whatever i want to put down i can put down you know the you know i'm only um held back by you know a lack of my own ability you know I'm, I'm not held back by anyone else or anything else going on around me so i enjoy working on my own but i also enjoy and love being in a band as well so get the best of both worlds yeah, yeah. Well, on the other hand um oh no that no, from a different point of view um what's the, the most frustration is, is switching from the creative side and the performing and then go, having to go back and turn to a more linear mindset and listen to the track because i'm usually stuck in the performance mode and i it's not until a day later I realized I've got to re-record this. Do you find anything like that? Are you able to separate those two roles? Yeah, um, yeah. It's, um, I'm quite a, a regimented person. It's like, you know, um, I, I like structure. So, right. I, I, you know, it's uh, during lockdown, you know, I wrote and record, recorded eight songs, but I also had to homeschool my son. And, and then, you know, I bought my chili sauce back as well. And, so I had to be really structured. Normally I have a tour manager or a manager around me telling me what to do, where to be and how to do it normally. But, um, you know, I like, I like order. So um, it's, okay. it's, I find it quite easy chopping and changing. What, what, what stresses me out is when it all mixes <laughs> in the middle. I like to do a job, get it done and then move on to the next one. I don't like to do five or six jobs at the same time and not be able to give them all 100%. Uh, right. Oh, so I don't stretch myself thin, you know, and that's a, that's a mistake a lot of people make. Right. I totally get that. Totally get that. Um, like I, I, I had listened to some of your solo stuff before, but I did a real kind of deep dive, if you will, um, back into your solo stuff uh, before doing this, of course. And um, obviously like most of your solo albums, it's just CJ Wildheart. Um, yeah. What was the CJ and the Satellites thing all about out oh, then? That was, again, it was an album I recorded on my own. And um, I put a band together so I could tour. So I, that's hence CJ and the Satellites. That was the name of the band. And ah, right. it, was just, it was so I could just get out and, and tour. And, you know, we, we, we did a, like a tour of the UK, a tour of China. And then the Wild Bots got really busy and, you know, I knocked it on the head. Who, who was in that touring lineup? Um, I had a drummer, uh, a guy called John Solomon. He was from an old um, indie band called Tiny Monroe back in the day. And um, I had Paul, a, a guitarist. Um, I, I can't think what band. Paul was in Three Colors Red for a bit. And um, oh, Lee okay. Ray, Lee Ray, who plays bass. He's played bass in all, like, all my touring solo bands. And he, he plays in a band called Zen Motel. And he, he was along, um, I think that, I think that was it. It's such a long time ago. I'm, I'm struggling to remember who's in the oh, band. We're, we're deep diving today, bro. We're deep diving uh, today. <laughs> I've, made, I've, made, I've made a few hundred albums since that one. So it's like, you know, <laughs> you kind of, um, you forget about those things. Um, well, the solo album I really need to ask you about, and I think you probably know which one this is because uh, I said to you about it the other day, Mabel. Yes, I, yeah. I want to know about Mabel the chicken, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, my chick! Well, I named the I named the album after my favorite chicken, Mabel. You know, um, you know, she's gone now. As long as I think Mabel came out about seven or eight years ago now, so it's it's you know, it's an older album. But yeah, I I wanted a name 
you know, she, and she was a big part of my life. And, you know, I just, I just thought it sounded like a, a cool name. It sounded like some, it sounded like a, a name maybe Weezer would use. They'd have an album called Mabel. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, she's on the cover as well, which is great. Well, a skeleton is, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've seen it's fantastic artwork. I mean, loads of albums these days, people try to go for a massive deep meaning behind the name of it. And sometimes it works better if you just do something simple, like in your case, oh, I want to name an album after my favourite chicken. Well, I mean, you either go deep or you go absurd. You know, yeah, and I, you know, I went crazy, you know, I named an album after my favourite chicken, as like, you it, do. It's a fantastic <laughs> record, honestly. It, it, it's... It's a very, um, it's a very, it's a pop album. Yeah, very, you know, very pop. Yeah, but that's the thing with you and with the rest of the wild arts guys as well. You're all such kind of diverse musicians. Yeah, we we we, we twist it around. Yeah, uh, like because um, uh, obviously you got some of your older, really crazy stuff like Sucker Punch, for example, yeah. to totally mad, and then uh, say. Renaissance men, as in the song. Yeah. On, yeah. Um, it, That's important, though. It's, it's important, especially for people like me and Ginge and a band like the Wild Arts is, is um, we're always evolving. And, and, you know, we have a sound, you know, but that sound is a, is a, a, a marriage of about 10 different sounds. It's, you know, it's not just a, what, you know, like an ACDC have a sound. That's it. Status Quo have a sound, Motorhead have a sound. The Wild Arts, we have about 10 different sounds, but it's still the Wild Arts, you know. But oh, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. We're a, we're a sexy band, you know. So where does that come from? Um, I mean, the, the obvious question is, uh, uh, where, where does, what, who are your influences that led you to that point? When, when, I mean, Ginger and myself, we formed the band in 1989, and, and we, we wanted a band that sounded across between Metallica, the Beach Boys, like the Sex Pistols Slayer, you know, and, you know, a, a bit of ACDC, maybe a bit of Cheap Trick in there as well. So we wanted all these different influences in there. No, one, you know, we had, we had lovely two-part harmonies over Metallica riffs and, and it, no yeah. one was really doing that, mixing that, that, that kind of thing together. Yeah. And, you know, a really nice Beach Boy harmony over a, a Sex Pistols, you know, sort of thing. And, yeah, that, and that's, that, I think that's the charm. I mean, that's what, you hear the introduction, okay, well, yeah, I'm hearing the electric guitar, fine. And then you go, whoa, those, those and then it's, it's almost like you've got a, the Rembrandts are you know, playing with the Sex Pistols almost, right? It's, 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 <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're worked so well. Like bands and, you know, people said you couldn't do that. And I said, yeah, we'll mix it up. And, you know, yeah. and I, I, it's purely because we could, we could do that, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we love thrash metal, we love punk, you know, we loved glam rock, we loved rock and roll, you know, so we thought, fuck it, we'll put it all in the, in the pot and see what comes out. And that's our sound, you know, it's, it's what we do. Yeah, see, um, I mean, for me, like the first time I listened to the Wild Hearts, um, Oh, I'm, I'm trying to think which song was the first I heard now, actually. But um, it was uh, so many different, like, time signature changes, overall feel changes going on within the song. And it's pulling my brain one way or another at any given moment. And uh, I, I was we have, like... We have, um, we have moments of um, prog <laughs> sometimes in us. <laughs> where we go off a bit, like, musically. But, I mean, um, they're great. But thank God we don't do it too often because... You know, we want people to dance and have a good time, not go to sleep. Well, and you want to be able to remember the songs, frankly. <laughs> because, I mean, for me, you know, going to a gig is about singing along and, you know, having a beer and having a jump up and down. And, you know, if you're going to have massive, big music scapes and stuff, but, you know, we're not that type of band. You know, we're a band we want people to go fucking crazy to. You know, it's, it's I don't want people smoking weed and thinking they're, you know, they're going up into a rainbow at my gig. <laughs> that, nothing wrong with it but you know that, I don't want you, I don't does, want you, you hippie that does sound about right to be honest <laughs> uh, I must admit I've been in a few rather heavy mosh pits to you guys man um, I remember actually and I, I'm going to slightly embarrass her a moment and I, th I think you'll like this story um, my first date with my missus right was actually going to see you lot on the Brit Rock Must Be Destroyed tour with Reef and Terrorvision and uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and it was at Motion in Bristol, right? Yeah. And um, I've got I've got in, and I'm like, I'm looking at the floor of this place, and it's all concrete. And I, I'm going, uh, okay, this is going to get dangerous. Um, first couple of bands play, and people are having a bop around. It's all good. It's all good. Um, and then you guys have come on and hit sick of drugs. And uh, yeah, this circle pit must have been a good 10 foot wide opened up going absolutely meant love freaking concrete i'm seeing people ended up hitting the floor hard it was oh it's, um <laughs> we i mean the thing is it's like we we even though we, we we're kind of older men now we still put so much effort and energy and you know i still move around like i'm you know 18 i still jump about and and uh, you know I'm, I'm 53 in december but you know i still want to get up on stage and move around i still want to scream and shout i mean my, my new album is the heaviest thing i've ever done because as i get older i want to get heavier i want to be sound louder i'm gonna go out on fire yeah. You know, some people <laughs> discover the bongos and tambourines, not, not me. Not me. <laughs> see, I, I, I want to come see the, the new CJ Wildheart band when gigs get going again, man. And I, I, we, um, I, well, the, I mean, the Wildhearts have got a lot of shows lined up next year. So, you know, I'm touching wood here that everything goes ahead because we, we, we had a lot of touring lined up for this year and, and we'd maneuvered ourselves and worked really hard with the album and the mini album and then just bang, everything just stopped. And it was just like, my God. So we're going to dust ourselves down and start up again next year and yeah, see how long it comes up. I, I, I've got to give a special mention to the Wild Hearts fan base here. Like loads of bands say they've got the greatest, most loyal fans in the world. But I think with you guys, it might actually be true. <laughs> We, we haven't got, I mean, we, we, we're not household name and, and, you know, we're a real cult band and, you know, been around, you know, over three decades now, but our fan base is really, really loyal and they, they've, you know, when, when we found out we couldn't tour, it's our bread and butter, it's how we survive. Uh, we couldn't be furloughed by the government either. So we, we've been living off, off our, our business, but there's no, there's hardly anything coming in because we're not playing. So, um, Fans have been buying our merch and, you know, been buying Ginger's stuff, my stuff, my hot sauce. They've kept us afloat and, and our fans are so loyal and wonderful. If it, if it wasn't for them, you know, I don't know what I'd be doing, you know. It's, it's, I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now if it wasn't for the Wild Art fans, put it that way. Fair enough. Well, um, leading off of that, though, um, I know it's kind of been mentioned a couple of times tonight already, but uh, Devil Spit Hot Sauce. Let's get mm. spicy, CJ. Tell us about Devil Spit. So, well, you, you mentioned the album Mabel. When, when Mabel came out, I, that's, the album came out with my first ever bottle of hot sauce as well. So that album was really important because it launched my, 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 my brand. But um, my, my mum is from the Seychelles and she's always made her own hot sauce. And, and she doesn't now, she's in a home now. But um, uh, so I grew up with my mum's hot sauce and with, but even from a kid, I was always adding hot sauce to all my food, like my mum did. And so when I had a chance to bring out my own hot sauce, I, you know, grabbed it with both hands. And it's my own recipe, but it's a combination of beer, barbecue and chili in a bottle, three of my favourite things. So that's why, yeah. What's and it's a wild heart really tour in a bottle? Hmm? <laughs> wild heart tour in a bottle. <laughs> it's pretty much a wild heart sore in a bottle, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of really unique flavour. So, um, and anyone who's tried it always says, you know, there's nothing like it on, on the market. And I have a, a ketchup as well, which is like nothing on the market. So um, I, I was too busy for the last couple of years to sell it. So it hadn't been available for two years, but I bought it back in July, obviously, because we weren't touring. And and it's, it's really taken off. But it, it, I can't let it take over my life because if it does, it means I can't do the music. So... You know, I have to stop selling it. Yeah, it's such a toss-up, really, isn't it? It's really popular. It shocked me how popular it is. But um, you know, I really do not want to be Levi Roots. Jesus Christ! You know? <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll Levi Roots. What's wrong with that? Absolutely not. Have you seen his cooking? Jesus. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. All no right. offense, Levi. <laughs> oh, are you a spicy food guy? Uh, yes, okay. I do. Like, I put Massive. cyan pepper on everything. <laughs> yeah, you've got. Oh, so, well, you're gonna, I'm gonna have to send you some of my sauce. Huh? That'd be uh, nice. Look forward yeah. to it. 
Well, uh, the the next time you put a batch out, where we're definitely going to be buying some of that. I'm doing a I'm doing a flash sale on Boxing Day for a, oh. a day, and then and then you won't be able to get it till late spring, early summer next year. You heard it here first, people. You heard it here <laughs> first, as you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so where are pe- where's this flash sale going to be happening? I have a, I have an online shop, um, a, a big cartel, and and that's where you buy my albums from, and you buy my source from, merch and stuff. So I I mean, I run. I'm a one man band. I do this. I have a help with my manager who helps me. But you know, it's 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 mostly me on my on my own doing this. You know, I record the albums, I do my thoughts, you know. But it it's it's great. It's a full time job, and 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 you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. You know, this this beats doing a regular day job hands down. Uh, oh, I feel that. I feel that. Like yeah. I, so I, for the audience, uh, for the audience, uh, you can um, it's uh, cjwildheart.bigcartel.com. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, right now it's an album shop. It's not a hot shop source shop at the moment. Oh, it isn't yet. Okay. Oh, let's scroll down, Mark. Scroll down. Yeah. Okay. But Bob, <laughs> get, get in there quick, because frankly, otherwise I'm going to buy it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be like, I am the only CJ World hot, hot Sauce Emporium in the country. I, I actually don't have many bottles to sell. I only have a few hundred. So, um, yeah, I keep, I keep, it's the reserve, you see. I keep it back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I keep it back so the prices don't go down too low. You know? Yeah, clever like that, like do you, diamonds. Do you yeah. ever right. do you ever actually <laughs> use it in your home cooking though? I use I use um, devil spit on everything. It's my favourite sauce, even though it's my own recipe. Yeah, I use it on on every. And my son, I have a um, a mild version, and my son only ever uses my ketchup as well. You know, he's, nice. Yeah, he stopped using all the other brands. He just says, yeah. Yeah, so he asked, what was his ex word? This is a really good sauce, Dad. <laughs> well, that's a seal of approval right there, mate. That's a seal of approval. If, if a six-year-old likes your ketchup, you're doing all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, to be honest, me and my dad just argue most of the time, even though he's the drummer in my band, so. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously you can't wait to get back to all the touring and all that, like, mm. Um, is there is there anywhere that you haven't hit yet that you desperately want to? Yeah, um, we were going to go to South America this year, our first ever tour, and it was like about five or six gigs. But um, I know Ginger wants to go to South America as well, and my and my dad's from South America, so I, re- I really want to, you know, go go and play and, and you know, nice there. So it means a lot to me. Um, uh, and I'd, I really want to go back to Australia as well. We didn't spend enough time there, and I, I saw far too many people and not enough animals when I was out, mm-hmm. out there. But I want to spin it around and do the whole wildlife thing, and, you know. And um, but um, I love touring America as well, so I wanted to, you know. They, they I, I've always noticed they really appreciate British rock bands over there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Japan's like probably the band's favorite country. It's like, I mean, we all love. We've played in Japan so many times. It's just, it's just, it's like a second home to to all of us. You know, Japan. Yeah, I I remember seeing a really good like um, live concert film from. Uh, it was not so long after Hutzpah came out, if I remember rightly. Right. Like a uh, live in Tokyo or something. It was when uh, Scott Sorry was still in the band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how's he doing these days? Is he doing any better? I know his health. He's good. He's good. He, I mean, he had a he had a scan, I think about a month ago, and yeah, he's, he's all clear. And um, I know he's working on new music right now as well. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I mean, I, I, I definitely think there'll be something from him next year. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, there is one particular album I I really want to bring up with with you. Um, Okay, obviously, I love every single Wild Hearts album, okay? But, like, there was a time where you guys maybe weren't touring as much uh, before a little album called Renaissance Men. (laughs) (laughs) When uh, Mr. McCormack came back into the band as well. Uh, Like, um, I've chatted to Danny on a few occasions, lovely bloke. Um, And honestly, 
I think it's the best proc album since 2000. I barely turned the thing off. Oh. Um, it, you know what? I, I've said this a few times. That album surprised us. And I think when, when you surprise yourselves, it's, it's, you're kind of halfway there, if you know what I mean. Um, we hadn't made an album in 10 years and we could have just done a paint by number album. You know, it's really easy for musicians as long in the t- tooth as us to just press the autopilot button. But we didn't, and um, it, it's, it's, it's refreshing, you know, for us that we went in the studio and just came out with something which excited us because, you know, ultimately we have to be the ones excited first. And we, I think we should be our, our fiercest crit- critics because, you know, it's, it's, we're, we're putting our asses and souls on a plate for the world to, you know, consume. And, and if you don't check yourself and, and you know, edit yourself and, and like, you know, you just you need to get serious, and and we did. We got we got really serious, and Renaissance Men was was the um the that's that was our effort, our um you know our group. Yeah, um, I mean, all, all three of us here are musicians, man. So we we totally get it. In it, in it, Mark. I'm sure you probably uh, spent months working on the same thing. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm uh, currently working on a song, which is a. Uh... I've been usually I'll uh, I'll spend a day or two once I once I decide I'm I'm, I'm finished I'll leave it but uh, this one I just keep having to go back and tweak it's not quite there it's, yeah some songs yeah. are like that I mean some songs I mean but Renaissance Man, I mean it was recorded in I forgot, six days we recorded it and and um, we actually um, we did we did some demos went in for five days did some demos but the actual recording process was about six days and then we we didn't double track anything everything was single tracked and we really wanted to capture the sound of the band so we we didn't over process things or over work on anything on this album it just kind of was like bish bosh bash that was it straight in straight out mix it put the thing out and talk so um, I, I think it's quite refreshing recording like that because you can overwork the pudding. You know, as you as you well know. <laughs> you know yeah, and... I, I guess the songs were like as far as what you were going to put down. I, I guess they were really sort of hammered out. Right, lads, this is exactly what we are going. We um, there was a process. I mean, we we would go in a rehearsal studio. Myself, um, Richie, and Ginger. Um, I, I don't know how many songs are on there, but you know, the ninety percent of them are, are gingers. And then I've got a song on there, and um, so Ginger would, would present us with a like an acoustic demo, and then the three of us would go in the studio and just knock around and get them into shape, and then record what we had in the rehearsal, and that's what everyone kind of learned the songs off, and then demo them, and then you can learn off the demos, and then straight in the studio. But it, it, it was it was quite a simple straightforward process and and considering we this lineup hadn't been together for 15 years and the band hadn't made an album in over 10 years it was relatively painless i, I was yeah very surprised um, um i i gotta admit like because i'd never seen the the four of you as it originally was with danny and that um when uh because i knew he'd come back and like played a few songs with you here and there but mm. then when I got to the motion gig I told you about on the Brit Rock tour, <coughs> uh, I saw a chair put out by the bass mic stand. And I'll be completely honest, I hadn't kept up with all things Wild Hearts for a while. And um, I've seen the chair, seen the bass. And was, I'm, I, I literally, I'm trying to act all cool because, like I said, I was on my first date with my missus. And I've just ended up freaking out. It's the original lineup. It's the original lineup. <laughs> What's going on? It's it's the um it's the lineup people um kind of like the best. It's kind of considered a classic lineup, but it's not. Danny was like our I think our third third bass player. Was he? He, he didn't the um the it was myself and Ginger and Stiddy, our original drummer, who who were. You know, we were the three members of the band back in '89, and and then we we had a, an, an, another drummer, we had another bass player, Jules. We had two singers in the band before Danny joined there, and and um, and then Danny Instead joined. Instead of be educated, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we um, we had Bam Bam played from the Dogs the More played on our first two EPs, and then Stiddy came back for for our first album of Versus and then he was out and then Richie joined the band and you know there's been a lot of different members but um 
you know, yeah, it's only Ginger and myself, but it, only two original members in, in the band, yeah, in this lineup, yeah. Well, my, my apologies, consider myself <laughs> humbly yeah, educated. The, the past is so checkered, and this band has been through so much dramas and twists and turns. It's the family tree is quite big now, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, actually, okay, that kind of leads like nicely onto uh, something I'm kind of uh, interested in. So, all the twists and turns in the drama. So, in 1994, um, during a recording session, something happened maybe between you and Ginger, and you found yourself out of the band. Um, well, um, so it's our second, yeah, it's our second album. Um, fuck, when we were recording our second album, um, uh, Ginger and I fell out. And um, um, after that album was recorded, I was kicked out of the band for, um, so I, I was out of the band for an album, basically. Um, they recorded one album without me, Endless Nameless. And then we reformed the band, basically. So, um, but it's, it's, Ginger's always said it was the biggest mistake he made, you know. Um, um, there's, a, there's a sound in the world arts, which, which is, is, the band's sound kind of, it's, you, you've got that bass tone, which Danny has, and, and Richie's such a solid drummer, you know, he's stuck, he's, he's stuck a, a machine. But there's a harmony thing me and Ginger do, there's that two-part harmony thing, and our guitars, we make this sound together, which, which is, it's really unique. And, and, but it, it takes, it takes, sometimes you've got to, you, you've got to step away from a group for everyone to realize exactly what was really good about that band. And, you know, as long as me and Ginger are singing together and playing gu guitar together, it always makes something that sounds like the wild arts. So, um, you know, and, and w without me in the band, there was, there was, a. Uh, I think I think they had something missing. I, I know all the guys would agree as well, you know. But they also made one of their, their best sounding out well, best kind of I think I wouldn't say it's their best sounding album, Endless Nameless, but it's got some of the most beautiful songs on it, if you dig deep. And there's a song on there called Urge, which is one of my favorite Wild Art songs. And um, you know, and I wasn't on that album, but um, um <laughs> you still play that live these days. Um I remember hearing it on... Yeah, we do, yeah. 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 I think the live version we do is actually a better version because you can actually hear, hear the words and you can hear... hear. It's quite an int intricate song. You can, you can't, it's kind of lost on the production on that album, but it's a great song, you know, and there's some really beautiful songs on that album. Really beautiful. Uh, yeah, I mean, is it odd for you to play Wild Heart songs that you maybe weren't on, like...? Um, not really. No, I mean, I mean, you... <laughs> I mean, I've been in the band longest, you know, it's like, you know, Danny was out of the band for 15 years, you know, he, he, he's actually played, I think, I mean, I'm trying to think, I mean, Richie was out of the band for a, a long time as well. And um, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it, most of the journey has been myself and Ginger, you know, so it's, it's not, it's, it's, the songs most people want to hear are songs, um, that I was on anyway, you know, it's, 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 you know, and, and it, it, I mean, if you're going to pick one Wild Art album for anyone to listen to, I, I tell them to listen to Earth Versus, you know, if you yeah. introduce every time and, you know, Richie isn't even on that album and, and, you know, Richie's by far the best drummer the band's had, you know, but he's not on that album, but there's a vibe on that album and it captures a band, you know, who are, you know, it's at the beginning of their journey, and it's like there's a sound and vibe on that album. And yeah, if I was going to pick one album, it would be that. Nice, nice. I mean, um, I've converted so many of my friends and my bandmates to you guys with uh, Earth Versus. Like, it, it's it's just such a classic record. I, I'm just a fan of great rock guitar duos, like. Francis Rossi and Rick Parfit, yeah, Angus yeah. and Malcolm Young, and obviously yourself and Ginger. Like when you've got a great guitar duo on the go, nothing. It's a, really a chemistry stop. thing, and, and it's like um, you can't you can't audition chemistry. You can't advertise for chemistry. It's, it's 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 a natural thing. You either have it or you don't. And you know, as much as me and Ginger, we, you know. There's, there's been times when we can't speak to each other. We can't be in the same room together, but it isn't, you know, there's a great mutual respect and love between us, but we have this chemistry, 
you know, and, and, you know, like this band has outlasted a lot of our marriages and a lot, you know, a lot of people have come and gone, <laughs> a lot of people have died around us and we're still together and we're still working and, you know, and this has been since 1989. So it, obviously there's something there or else we wouldn't, you know, still be working, you know, we're about to start work on a, a new album in the spring. So, you know, it's, it's, it's healthy. Again, you heard it here. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, what made you want to kind of branch out and do the solo stuff at first? Like back when you did, I, mean, the, it's, I had to, I, I stopped, I stopped making music when I turned 40. Um, I stopped for two years. I, I wanted to get out of me, the music industry and just, I actually wanted to do something really normal. And, it, and people were saying I was having a midlife crisis, but just reversing it. I stopped taking drugs. I stopped touring around the world. I stopped being an arsehole. You know, it's like, <laughs> stop being rude. Um, and I got a job. But, um, uh, and I did a, a regular job for a couple of years just, just to come back down to earth and, and just, just to see what it's like, you know. And, and, and then the thing it really made me appreciate was how lucky I was to be able to always make a living from music. And um, it, there was a, a a point when my ex-wife said to me, right, you, you, you did your job, right, decide what you're going to do, have a start another business or you know, go back into music. And I went, I'm going back into music. And she went, good. <laughs> <You know, laughs> wow. So that wasn't the first time you, uh, took a, you uh, took a break. We were kind of forced to take a break. Uh, um, we, uh, had a, we had an issue in 2013 with, uh, with your uh, left hand. Yes, yeah. I, I, this, this is a problem... Um, I have a hereditary arthritis problem, but um, I've had, I had a problem with my left hand since I was about probably 10 or 11, but it, uh, it's a repetitive strain thing. And I have tennis elbow as well. And um, the first time I had the problem was in 96 and I had an operation on my left hand and, and I couldn't play for about four months. Um, the problem came back again. And um, I tried um, all sorts of things, physiotherapy, cortisone injections. I was wearing compression straps, on, on, on stage and what cured me in the end was acupuncture and yeah. um, ever since I, I, I had acupuncture um, occasionally I'll get little tinges or, or twinges here and there but the problems never come back and um, I've had two major problems in my life um, which could have ended my career and both times when like traditional western medicine has failed acupuncture has sorted me out both times, yeah. And I don't know how it's worked, but it has sorted me out. Yeah. Well, the, the science is in on acupuncture that it does work, um, and it is actually uh, um, on certainly on the, uh, the Canada um, Manitoba Health. It's covered. So it's, 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 it's become the mainstream. It's just that uh, the lines that they use and the specifics. Oh, it doesn't matter where the needles go. It works. It works. So it, no, it's, 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 it is um, now regular medicine. It's very, very powerful. I mean, when, when you first have it done, I mean, uh, it's like, I, I was actually like, overwhelmed on the, the feeling I had, uh, you know, and I, I ain't, um, you know, I have elements of everything, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not some, you know, om chanting Buddhist mm -hmm. hippie punk, you know, <laughs> I eat steak, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's, it worked for me. Yeah, and I yeah. definitely recommend it, you know, for anyone to, you know, either use it alongside what you're doing, but um, give it a try if you, if you run out. I ran out, I tried everything, you know, and, and it, it saved, saved, saved my career. So, you know, yeah. twice. So it's scientifically proven, it does work. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, just uh, one other question on the state of a single, by the way. And uh, honestly, the, this doesn't entirely come from me, it comes from my girlfriend. Um, that clown face paint. <laughs> what was the, what was the thought <laughs> process there, CJ? It's, it's it's because of um the state of us. We're all clowns, all right. There, there's there's been a couple of episodes this year when the world could have changed for the better, and the way people behave and how selfish and like self centered everyone is, and, and just damn right like the. It's just, it's infuriated me. There was a couple of things when, the moments in, in this year when the world could have truly changed. And, and I just looked at, looked at the images on my TV and just what a bunch of fucking clowns we are. And, you know, and I, and I put every color, every creed, 
every religion, every type of person. I don't care if you're bi-gender, gay, straight. I'm putting everyone in the same umbrella because we are ultimately the same fucking species. All right? I don't care where you come from or what you're into. We're all the fucking same. You stab me, you stab her, you stab him, you bleed red. And we are fucking clowns. We could have changed the world and we didn't. And we're still not changing the world. We're still not changing ourselves because it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's not in, down to the individual. It's down to the masses. It, it'll take a concerted effort of everybody on this planet to make it a better place. It's never going to happen because we're all a bunch of fucking clowns. Hence the makeup. There you go. I've got to say, mate, that's one of the most profound things I've heard all year. Uh, yeah. um, uh, and you'd expect to hear it out of some world leader or something like that. But Mate, if you, can't, if you can't beat them, you join them. <laughs> 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 to be fair, they're the biggest clowns of the lot. But <laughs> so, I mean, when, when you hear the album, you'll, you'll hear where I'm coming from. But, you know, um, I've had a lot of personal stuff going on as well. I mean, my, my folks, both, you know, my... My, my dad has dementia. My mum was diagnosed with dementia this year. Um, she's also, you know, um, tested positive for COVID-19 as well. They're both yeah. in homes. I haven't seen them. I haven't. Last time I saw my dad, he was dying. He might he survived, but that was the only time I could see him since March in a hospital, hospital bed, you know? And, you know, I can't visit them. I didn't see my girlfriend for three months. And then I see fucking idiots stockpiling toilet paper. <laughs> oh, rioting and looting and stuff like that fucking losing it over fucking statues i mean come on you know <laughs> children fucking starving yeah you yeah know? so the way i looked where i looked at that toilet paper thing was i've said this on online many times is that most modern bathrooms have a sink yeah yeah I know. <laughs> there are options <laughs> these were a catalyst for me to to write a hardcore punk album and, and in some ways you know the lockdown and the way people behave has helped me because it, you know i'd rather put those that that, that anger into music but it's also I've, I've got a product now i've got something which is i'm selling and it's going to pay my mortgage it's going to pay my bills and you know get my my son up, you know some games for his nintendo switch it's like so something good has come out of that. It feeds me, you know, people get entertained by my music, but Jesus, some of the idiots out there. I mean, it's just, it's heartbreaking, but if you read it at the same time, it's... it's... I, I mean, when, when your job can basically be having fun making music, still making money to support yourself and everything, and telling all the fools of the world that they're fools... They, they won't believe that. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, you know, um, everyone doing what they want to do and how they want to do it. Just don't fucking, you know, fuck me over or, you know, mess with the people I love. But it, it, it's, it's gone crazy this year. I, I don't know if it's a combination of, of what's going on with the pandemic and that, but it, it has gone. It's just gone. People have gone nuts. Yeah. I've got people are talking about like this vaccine having like, nano fucking bots in it and shit like that oh. you're going to be controlled it's like oh they're going to track you why the fuck would any government want to track you all you do is go to work go on holiday go to the pub you don't do anything of any interest to anyone apart from your fucking self it's like get a grip you're not that important you know i'm not that important it's just it's like oh you can hear the, the, the passion coming out of me on this, but it's like, Jesus Christ. Bro, it just makes me want to hear the album more, you know? <laughs> like, um, you'll, 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 I attack every, there's even a song on the album called TP, which stands for toilet paper. Ah! It's all about <laughs> those people. <laughs> awesome. You, song about you know, you had to. Well, uh, yeah, I think you'll like this. I, I had a conversation with someone about the, uh, the tracking thing um, on Facebook, and I, I commented back and said, Look, I really respect your opinion and your right to hold it. Just remind me, what platform are you typing this on? Uh, <laughs> um, what device are you using? A uh, 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 mobile phone? Uh, mate, if they want to track you, you're holding the damn shit. I know. I mean, the minute you pay a bill, you're tracked. But it's, 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 I've got friends who say they're not going to take it because they don't know what's in it. And these, these friends of mine, like me, have put every fucking drug in their body, up their nose, in their <laughs> arm, you know, up their ass, and they don't want to take a fucking <laughs> And I'm looking at them going, what? The shit you have put in your bodies decade after decade, and you're scared of one injection. I just, 
the, it's no. it's does my head in. It's just the irony. We don't get it. Yes. You know? They've been watching too much uh, Star Trek and the Super Blood and the well, James Bond as well. Tracking we, through. We're just not that far. <laughs> we have, like, box and stuff Hollywood. Like that. Well, I blame Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it'll be interesting. I mean, it'll be interesting. The, the, the vaccines are coming, so I mean, it'll yeah. be. You know, the so. world changed. We're not going to go back to the way it was. It has changed, but you know, we evolve. You know, this is you know something has changed in you know the world. It's nothing stays the same. I, I mean, it's it's. I'm also you've got to realize something about me. I'm probably the least nostalgic person you'll ever meet. I'm always looking in front of me and I'm always looking what's coming because I want to go forwards. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've always try and make the best of what I'm doing right now so that I don't have regrets. And, and I'm, you know, it's what's in front of me, which is really, really important. You know, the past is gone, you know, and, and you know, I've, I've had some horrible times. I've had some amazing times, but I never want to go back ever ever want to go back i always want yeah. to go forwards yeah so you know i'm not one of those people who hark back to you know oh when we used to record and tape and oh fuck the old marquee club when those days great <laughs> yeah recording on tape when the uh, average people could not afford to buy the equipment i remember yeah. trying to beg <laughs> yeah. to borrow someone else's stuff now you now you can do it all on your bloody computer I, I mean, I love technology. I yeah. love technology. And all yeah. those people who are complaining about the internet and technology, um, I bet they were glad they had it during lockdown. Yep. Oh. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, I'm sat in my little home recording studio right now, you know. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's like, like and, and now I've kind of multi-purposed it into running this at the same time. <laughs> yep. I, There's some great things right in the world. You know, um, technology is great. I can record albums. My last four solo albums have all been recorded either in one of my bedrooms or in a living room. And um, you, you couldn't do that back in the day. Um, just, uh, oh. just a little question on the, the technical side of the albums, if I may. What software are you using these days to like track your guitar parts and that? Um, I, I use, um, I always record on Cubase and that's purely because that's what I learned to record on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and, and then I, I never amp. I always use, um, Amplitude, like a VST thing. I've always used Amplitude and, and same with the bass as well. It's just DI'd in. Um, but I get a nice tone from my guitars and people are always asking me if I amp, if I mic up and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it, it depends on what type of player you are, you know, but I, I think if, if you know, roughly what you're doing you can get a good sound out of just about anything uh, yeah, I, yeah i mean it, like the right interface and vsts and you're away you're rocking what, what you really need is a really good vocal mic that's really important yes uh, yes uh, I, I probably need to replace mine eventually <laughs> Yeah, because um, that's one thing you can't really skimp on you know you can cheat with guitars and 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 stuff. Um, obviously, drums. If you're recording live drums, that's a different kettle of fish altogether. But vocals, you, you need a good mic. It's really important. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I, I was also going to ask. Like, obviously, you've seen the British music landscape, especially for rock music, for thirty plus years now. If you were talking to someone that had just decided, right, I want to go for it with this new band of mine i'm like people who've never been heard of or anything what's that that one golden bit of advice you know it's it's really hard because we get asked this question a lot but when when we started out you know um you know ginger and, and myself we started playing in the 80s and things were really different then you know you would re go into a studio record a demo you know they'd send it to an agent send it to record labels there were no social media platforms you know there was none no facebook or anything like that so it's, it's i don't know what it's like to be a young person and a new musician right now and the whole thing has completely changed the only advice i could give any young musician is is the only thing I'd say is like, you know, work on your songs. You know, it's really important. It's always about the songs, you know, ultimate. It doesn't, you know, you can have the best hair in the world, you know, and you, you know, you could be the best looking person in the world. That isn't enough. You, you know, ultimately it's the music that, that, you know, punches through. And that's the only advice I'd give someone is, is to work, work on their songs. But the rest of it, um, 
I, you know, I'm, I'm so long in the tooth in my career and I have a management and, and stuff. And, you know, I understand modern technology and I understand platforms, but there are youngsters out there. They're becoming very famous and they're becoming famous in a way which is totally new to people like myself mm -hmm. and Ginge yeah. and Danny and Rich. Yeah, it's a different, different way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I thought if I can, I'd like to just jump in. Um, uh, one of the markets that I've been playing since the 1980s and we're playing in England and um, there was a, the social media was literally stapling a, a flyer yeah. to, to, to yeah. a poll. Uh, but I think the, the, my bit of advice, yeah, the, the music is, uh, the good songs are, is absolutely fundamental. Next thing is don't wait till it's perfect, get out and play. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Do it. It's, um, it's, it's a lot of, um, I'm, I'm actually encouraged by how good a lot of young youngsters are. They seem, you know, um, we, uh, to be honest with you, when, when we were younger, we were too busy doing drugs and, you know, chasing women and, you know, getting drunk. Kids <laughs> <laughs> don't seem to have, they, they don't have that wild streak anymore. They really want to, you know, learn their instruments and, you know, the, the, you know, but yeah, nothing, nothing can compare to going out there and playing live. I mean, it's the reason why we make albums. We don't make albums, you know, so we can go in the studio. I mean, the studio is a pretty cold and sterile place and you know but we want to be on stage it's like it's where i want to be you know i love playing live i love getting up and having a dance and a sing you know and this year has has it reinforced that love even more because it's been taken away from us and every other artist in the world and and you know i just i, I can imagine what it's going to be like for all those bands and groups and singers out there when they get back on stage next year and do a proper gig, not those weird socially distanced gigs which were happening earlier on. In the <laughs> no, no, none of that. Proper, proper, I mean, it'll be religious for all those bands and artists, won't it? It'll be a religious experience. I Amazing. mean, um, uh, I mean, like, uh, I'm actually, uh, Hellcats fans already know this a bit, but I'm actually opening for you guys in Cardiff at the um, Huggard charity show. But if that, end, if that tour ends up being your first gigs in the UK of the year. I'm actually very tempted, um, as long as it doesn't clash with uh, our touring. I've got to double check the dates, but I'm tempted to come to the first night just to see how much it just explodes. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I think our first big bit of download is our, as our big. Oh, yes. We'll do some warm ups and all that. I think all the shows before that have been. Um, Oh, my alarm's going off. All the shows, one second. <laughs> oh, uh, this is very exciting, isn't it? I'll be right back. No worries, no worries Mark. Jesus, I'm going through about a thousand minutes as well, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's all right, CJ. It's the sort of show where these things happen. There it is. I found it. it hey, is. here he is. But, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Now, um, yeah, I think Download is our first really huge huge show and any i think anything before that has probably been moved now but you just don't know i mean as i said when we were talking before this started everything's been moved so many times i'm actually quite confused now and i just want to get the call from a manager to go right this gig is going ahead and you need to be here and then i'll be happy yeah so whenever that's going to be you know i'll be happy yeah see i i've got my ticket for download rolled over from last year already Eight. Yeah, most of the most of the same bands are, are playing it, and it's, it was a good one for us because you know it's it's really great to play the second stage at Download. It's a, it's like a second home for us. You know, um, that. Actually, that was the first place I ever saw you live. Was that um, what the first time we played there? Uh, was... No, this was twenty fourteen. Oh right, because the uh, first time we played there was nineteen ninety four. Oh, oh uh, mate, mate, no, no, you no, I'm, I'm a bit younger than that. I know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, like I would have been about three. <laughs> yeah, that was the. Uh, actually, enough, it wasn't called. It wasn't called Download then. It was called the Monsters of Rock Festival. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think my dad was at that actually. But I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, uh, it was it was Monster Magnet. You guys, Twisted Sister, and Status Quo were the last four on the second stage. I remember great. Right? Yeah, that wasn't the one when we we got taken off stage by the security for inciting a riot was it wasn't that yeah 
<laughs> no, but I wish I was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they cut the PA and and took us off stage for inciting a riot. But um, wow. there was the, um the the main arena, real second stage again, all joined up and it all got a bit bit crazy. Yeah, and then, yeah, our set got cut short, but. We, apparently, we were the band of the weekend. Oh. <laughs> hey, to be honest, you usually are for me if you're playing. And how do you follow that? How do you follow follow being uh, pulled off by security? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really odd. It was re really odd being pulled off. There's about 30, 40,000 people there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's very odd. Yeah. I mean, I've got to ask, what, what sort of happens? Does all the sound just go like in your in ears and all that well i know you, you you can when a pa goes down you can you can hear it you know when they turn off the monitors and stuff it's so loud on stage it honestly it's 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 like going from hero to zero in like a blink of an eye it's it's like <laughs> and then all these, of, guys, uh, what's well, all these on? guys on high vis jackets kind of came on and with security on their back and, and they all kind of get off <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I wasn't there for that one but I have seen a similar thing I don't know if you're familiar with an Australian band called Airborne yeah I know Airborne yeah I do oh, yes. um, the last time I watched them at Download right Justin the front man he always does this thing and it's always during a tune called Girls in Black right you, you know if he's going to do something mental that's when it's going to happen right uh, second stage again and he's climbed the whole of the freaking tower at the side. He's good 30 foot in the air and he's blazing a guitar solo up there. And or, he's not harnessed or anything. This wasn't set up. He was just like hooking his foot through one of the bits of scaff and um, just blazing this guitar solo. And the next thing we know, all the sound cuts. <laughs> but um, they take the band off stage and the whole place just starts going, airborne, airborne, airborne. <laughs> and I think the security became scared of us, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you got to, I mean, you got to be careful when, when things like that happen because, you know, in the, in the wrong, because of the, the heightened sort of passion, especially at rock gigs, you got to be careful, you know, it, um, riots do start because of stuff like that, you know, and, and it, it's, um, but I mean, thankfully at Wild Art shows, you know, we have such a mixture of people, you know, young, old, you know, all sorts. I mean, there's a lot of um, parents bringing their kids now to see us as well. Yeah, I, I've is, seen that a lot in the past couple of years, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a real, it's a real, it makes you feel really old, but it's a real compliment <laughs> as well. <laughs> Uh, Especially when you said you were only three years old when we first played, like at um, Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I wish I could have gone to Donington back in those days because it sounds like, even though Download gets mad, like it sounds. Oh, like it, it's those... it's nothing compared to what like the Donington like Monsters of Rock Festival was. It was like war, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the, uh... Shit thrown non-stop piss mud bottles everything it was it was like war yeah brilliant the, the sea of bottles flying everywhere yeah. it's in, insane it was insane and then health and safety kicked in and everything changed well, <laughs> it, it, i um i've seen a few of the big bottle fights even at download and like even these days it looks like that scene from 300 where the arrows just black out the sun and it's just like ah yeah, yeah. shit here we go yeah, you haven't you haven't arrived until you've had a bottle of piss thrown over you mid solo trust me you know <laughs> that all rock and rock and roll musicians go through you need you need the bottle of piss thrown at you yeah. well, well you know, I, I haven't ha i haven't had that yet maybe uh arrange me something for cardiff next year yeah, yeah you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be careful what you ask for mate <laughs> <laughs> hey, some people, hey, some people okay. have been paid for that pleasure you know <laughs> <laughs> oh see i was about to bring you lot beer when we get to cardiff like but <laughs> <laughs> now if you want a bottle of piss then now there fair dues <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, no, it, it, it's so awesome that you've done this, CJ. Thank you, man. Well, thank, thank you very much. I, it, it, a lot of fun. I, like, I, I really mean this, like, mm -hmm. and I, I don't care if everyone on Facebook see, it sees me say this. You're a freaking hero to me, man. Like, well, thank you. Thank you, you. You guys are everything I want to be. Okay, like, 
I mean, bands like yourselves are the reason I even started playing, you know. Uh, you know, it, it, it's always um, it's it's always nice. Um, we we get a lot of respect, the World Hearts. Although you know, we're not we're not a huge huge band, but the people who do know us, they 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 get they show us a lot of love and respect, and and you know, we we always feel really humbled by it. All of us do, and and we also know, as I said, I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now if it wasn't for our fans. You know, they've been supporting us this year, and. They've kept us afloat, and you know, for that we are eternally grateful. And for that very reason, you know, the album we make next year is just going to strip people's faces off. You know, and it's it's <laughs> it's that, um yeah, that's a good we're, we're going to come back with all the big guns blazing. Yeah. Okay, so just to kind of recap the really important stuff: Boxing Day, Devil Spit, Hot Sauce, Flash Sale. Yeah, my new album comes out December the 11th as well. That is true. That is true. Siege drops on December 11th. Go and listen to the single State of Us, Us right now. If you're scared of clowns, maybe avoid the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, not going to lie, I was a bit taken aback when I first saw that. <laughs> but, are you, are you, you're fearful of the clown, are you? Uh, it, it, not, not entirely. It was just a bit, huh? What? What's I going really to like him. I find, I find them quite um, arousing, if I'm honest. With you. <laughs> hey, hey, Interesting. you heard it here first, people. <laughs> CJ Wall is aroused by clowns. There's going to be the people record. turning up at the gigs now with clown makeup going, do I arouse you, CJ? <laughs> yeah. And for the record, I, 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 I'm, my, my view on clowns is somewhere between the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know I'm now going to have to do that right. I, like, you will see me in the front row in clown face with a sign just going, Oi, CJ, am I arousing you yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me on the show. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been uh, a bag load of fun. Whenever, whenever you've got a solo thing going on, you are welcome in the madhouse anytime. Me and Mark. Well, I'll, 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 do, I'll, I'll make a promise to you. When, when the new Wild Art album comes out and... You know, when we start touring again, drop me a line and I'll, I'll come back and talk to you guys. Okay. That'd be fantastic. Yes, bro. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. No. <laughs> uh, for the last time tonight, you heard it here, folks. CJ's coming back <laughs> with all album drops. All That'd right. I, uh, my name's Adam Feezy. This is Mark David Stallard. This has been the greatest interview I've ever conducted in my freaking life. Thank you so much, CJ Wildheart. <laughs> thank you. You thank are you. a rock and roll god, my man. And honestly, <laughs> thank Brilliant. you. Well, you guys take care, okay? Yeah, cool, cool. I'm going to... Thank you so much. Uh, you too. Um, well, uh, um, I'm going to go and, um... I said this offline, but uh, I, I hadn't really heard uh, about you um, before Adam introduced, introduced me to you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've, I'm, a, I'm a fast becoming a big fan too, so... Um, if you want to, uh, there's an album the Wild Arts make called The White Album. And it's it's got our four faces on it. It's a white album with our four faces, hence called the white white album. But um, uh, listen to that because that's it's like that's very musical that album. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very musical. There's a song in there called "Rooting for the Bad Guy." It, it's really it has um it's a long song. It's about nine minutes, and another one called "Slaughtered Authors." They're both about nine minutes long. But when I said we we kind of go off in a musical sort. Of, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you might dig them them two songs. Yeah, nice. Yeah, those are Thank, you. Thank you so much. Well, I, I, I got a, my girlfriend's waiting for me. No and, worries. Um, yeah, she has my clown outfit ready. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, she knows she knows how to get you going. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, and I meant well. I'll definitely come back once the Wild Art album's out and, and everything's kind of reset in the world. It'll be nice to talk to you, you know, about you know, Under normal the new world. Practice. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. That would be absolutely fantastic. I'll and come, maybe I'll you'll be able to, to use the 5G they've injected into me for the nanobots. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll use that to keep track of you only. Uh, we won't do that for nefarious reasons. Yeah. All right. Take all care, right. guys. All right. Thank you very much, CJ. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Bye. And that's, that's it for this week, guys. Uh, absolute honour to chat to CJ Wildart tonight about all things from solo albums to the Wild Hearts to being aroused by clowns. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and uh, just to, and just to, of course, the, the usual uh, ending was, of course, if you, 
please like uh, the video. It really helps us out. Uh, subscribe to whichever channel you're on. Follow and share, share, share. This has been absolutely a lot of fun to do. And um, yeah, it's going to, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun for your friends to see too. So share with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as far as from my side, yeah, please follow the uh, Adam and the Hellcats page and the Invisible Man show page. Um, Mark will be back on the Invisible Man show this coming Saturday. Hey, yep. um, and With Eddie Mall. Live from oh, the... Uh, yeah. uh, live from no, the Feezy no, no, studio. No, 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 oh, last no, week. That would be last week. week we did that. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> last week we did that, man. And come on. <laughs> like, like, know your schedules. Your yeah, I've got to know my, I've got to know my future, a past schedule. Um, Bro, you're meant to be uh, the boss here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just a new guy. <laughs> I, yes, indeed. So, uh, right. loose with load is coming up this week. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, my name is Adam Feezy. This is Mark David Stallard, and this has been Welcome to the Madhouse. We will see you again next week. Thank you very much. See you soon. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>